everything past, present, and future. Everything. He knows every thought, every inclination of every living being simultaneously and thoroughly. That is the knowledge of God. The Lord is supremely renounced.
an absolutely enchanting song of Krishna's flute is unique only to Krishna. In Vaikuntha, the land of Lord Narayan, it is a perfect spiritual world that is eternally beyond material inequities. It is Harita. They are everything as such at Ananda. It is Aishwarya It is the place where the Lord manifests His supreme majesty as the all-powerful God of all gods. But by the Lord's own sweet will, He reveals a bo an abode even higher than that. And that is Krishna Loka. Vrindava, Saitavi, various names. In that abode, the Lord's Aishwarya, His supreme powerful majesty, as the Absolute, becomes subordinate to His Maturya Deva, to His sweet master. That Madhurya Dham is so very special. Because in order to have deeper, more intimate experience of love with God, the Lord, by his yoga maya fortis or his lila shakti, he covers his supreme majesty so that we can intimately love him as a friend, as a parent, or as a lover. In Goloka, to worship the Lord as the Supreme is considered a type of sentiment that cripples the highest and sweetest service to the Lord. We have to go through that stage of realizing the supremacy of God. But beyond that, in Goloka, Krishna's friends, they consider Krishna to be just one of them. They play together. From common experience in this world, an analogy can be applied. If someone is uh, a judge in a courtroom, people will come before him and offer all respects and do whatever he says honored him as such. But amongst his friends, nobody's honoring him. They're equals. Yes. But doesn't he enjoy being with them more than the people that honor him? And don't the people that are his friends enjoy his relationship more? And then there are the parents. Parents love him even more than the friends do. And they're telling him what to do and what not to do. Yes. And the man is a lover. The lover usually doesn't say, Your Honor. She usually says, Why did you come home so late? I am waiting. Dinner is waiting. No, oh, I'm sorry. Whatever it takes to please her. So spontaneous love, intimate love, is far sweeter. And it is that type of love of God that is found exclusively in Goloka Vrindava. Therefore, yes, Krishna's sweetness makes him supreme in all other manifestations of himself. 
today is Janmashtami. It is such a sacred day. No human mind can ever fully calculate its value. Because on this day, Lord Krishna descended from the highest of all spiritual planets, Goloka, to this world. And it is so rare. The Lord manifests, manifests various types of incarnations often in this world. We have described the Guna avatars, the Purusha avatars, the Lila avatars, the Shakyavesha avatars, the Manu avatars. But in his original transcendental form, he comes to this world to to attract us to his pastimes of Vrindavan. How often? Once in a day of Brahma. The Shastras tell us a day of Brahma is 4 billion, 320 million years. And the night of Brahma is of the same duration. So once in over eight billion years, the Lord appears in his original form as Krishna. He's the son of Deva, Vasudeva, Nanda, and Yashoda. And what is so special? When he comes in this form, he reveals his Vrindavan pastimes. He reveals the sweetest abode of Vrindavan. Because the Lord does not come alone. His abode of Vrindavan actually descends into this world with all of its glory. And he brings his whole entourage of associates, his Sladini Shakti, his self, self same pleasure potency, Srimati Radharani, his own expansions, Balaramji and the principal cowherd boys. Srimati Radharani's personal expansions of Lalita and Vishaka. And she expands in parental affection as Yashoda. <coughs> These are the very personalities they are exchanging the most intimate, sweetest leela with the Lord in the spiritual world, and they're all coming here to this world. Why? This little tiny speck of an earth planet. Unbelievable. If you're really an important person, why would you take so serious one little speck of a place? Yes, considering the spiritual world, within this material existence, which is outside of the spiritual world, there are unlimited universes. And amongst and within each and every one of these universes, there are unlimited planets within the 14 planetary systems. And this Earth is just a tiny little speck within a universe, which is just a tiny little speck within the galaxies of universes. But yet Krishna personally brings his eternal abode with his most intimate, loving associates here. Krishna appeared just at the end of the Dwapa Yuga. Prabhupada said only 5,000 years ago. Some of us said 5,000 years is a long time ago. It's practically prehistoric. But considering it comes only once every eight billion plus years, five thousand years is like a few minutes ago. But that day that he appears, how glorious. He comes to shower the supreme blessings on all of these things. He comes to attract our hearts back to his eternal loving service. 
Yes. Krishna simultaneously appeared in Mathura and Gokula, Vrindavan. <coughs> On this day, in the prison cell of Kamsa, Vasudeva and Devaki, who had proven their devotion through so many trials and tribulations,
the absolute truth can never have any untruth. Yes? On the relative plane, there is truth and there is lie. But in the absolute truth, Krishna is all good. Whatever Krishna does is for the ultimate pleasure and welfare of all. Yes? He wanted to increase the Shodamai's ecstatic love. And he wanted to taste the nectar of the sweetness of her love. So he spoke like this. But then when she went to look at his mouth, what if she saw the dirt? Because the dirt was there in his mouth. So just to distract her from seeing the dirt, he manifested the entire creation within his mouth. Very good. She saw all the plants, all the mountains, the oceans, the seas, all living entities. She even saw all of Rindava. She even saw herself looking in Krishna's mouth. So when everything else is there, she really didn't take note of the dirt. But she was beside herself. What am I seeing? How is this possible? He's my little Gopal. All the planets, all the seas, all the oceans, all the mountains, all the things, I'm seeing them all. She had folded hands. She was trembling, offering prayers. What's happening to me? Is this, is this a dream? It can't be a dream because my eyes are open. Is, is, is somebody putting me under a spell? No, it can't be that because everything is so fine. Maybe my mind has become deranged. No, because I'm performing all my duties quite properly. What is the reason? Ah, Gargarish, he predicted during the name giving ceremony that my child Krishna was the Supreme Lord, Narayan, who has come to this world. He comes so many times to deliver the, the, the devotees, give pleasure to his servants, annihilate the demons, and reestablish principles of religion. She said that he would perform superhuman, unbelievable activities. Is this what it is? Is this what I'm seeing? I'm looking into the mouth of God himself, or a very, very, very great personality? She thought about it for an instant and rejected it. Impossible. This Gargarishi, he can say what he likes, but he doesn't know. I know who is my Gopal. He can say anything. But when there's lightning, Gopal cries and runs to me. And unless I embrace him, he trembles in fear. And when my little Gopal is hungry, cries for food, and he won't stop crying until I feed him the milk from my breast. I know who my Gopal is, and my Gopal knows who I am. We know each other. We don't need Gargarishi to tell us who, who's who. He is simply my baby, that's all, and he can never be anything else. All I can say about what I'm seeing in his mouth is it just cannot be understood, that's all. And Gopal is my baby, and he's an ordinary child who needs me. And Krishna closed his mouth and smiled, and she completely forgot everything she saw. Why? Because her motherly affection became so uncontrollable 
that it totally covered the memory of what she just saw. And she fed her sheet of milk from her breast. This is Vrindava. This is the Lima of Braj. And Gopis, the supreme most devotees, people of India and throughout the world have too many misconceptions of the love between Krishna and Gopis. It has nothing to do with the love of this world. But the greatest sannyasis, Shukadeva Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunathas Goswami. These great, great Acharyas have all declared on the basis of scripture and parampara that the purest, highest, most condensely ecstatic love of God, of all liberated souls, is the sole property of the gopis of Vrindavan. Because their love is totally selfless. Their love is exclusively for the pleasure of Krishna. And when you water the root of the tree, every, la every part of the tree is nourished. To the degree we satisfy Krishna, to that degree we feel the highest happiness. The gopis, gopis of Braj give the maximum happiness to Krishna because of the purity and the sweetness of their love. The total surrender of their hearts. And therefore, there is no happiness that can even be compared to the love, to the happiness of gopis. Billions of times more intensified ecstasy of love of God even to be found in the Vaikuntha planets. Yes, Lakshmi Devi, the highest consort of Vishnu in Vaikuntha, she was longing to enjoy the Rasalila with Krishna. She left Narayan to perform tapasya for that purpose. But she was not allowed in the Rasalila. This is in the Shastra. Why? Because she couldn't give up her feeling that I am the goddess of fortune. The gopis are turning butter, carrying cow dung on their heads. But their love for Krishna and their simplicity is so pure. Yes, the highest realm spiritual love is the property of the residents of Vrindavan. And Janmashtami is the day when Krishna appears in this world to reveal the love of those devotees and the beautiful pastimes and qualities that he possesses to attract the love of his devotees. Krishna appears on Janmashtami. He actually makes a vow to all the beings entrance into Vrindavan. But in the age of Kali Yuga, even though he reveals these pastimes and gives his message in Bhagavad Gita to attract our hearts, People are so crippled by material attachments and various diversions that very rarely can anyone really understand what Krishna has given us on Janmashtami. The Lord is so kind. Mahavaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gaurati Shinama. Krishna comes right within the middle of Kali. About 4,500 years within the Kali Yuga, the Lord appears as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
who is Krishna tasting the sweetness of Radha's love and distributing it freely. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself who is teaching us how to love Krishna, how to enter into the abode of Vrindavan, how to awaken that attraction for Krishna within our hearts. Through the practice of being the time. Nam Nam Kalipa Mija Sarvasha. Kali Kali Nam Rupe Krishna. That same Krishna has descended within this world in the form of the Holy Name. Golokya Premadana Hari Nam Sankhya. How wonderful. This Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is not just an ordinary mantra to invoke auspiciousness in our lives. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra has descended from Goloka Vrindavan. The entire abode of Vrindavan. All of the wonderful loving devotees of Vrindavan. The beautiful forms of Radha and Krishna the sweetness of the love of Radha and Krishna, the qualities of Radha and Krishna are all not different than that name. And by chanting the holy name of the Lord sincerely, with humility and a nice service attitude and following moral principles, it's very easy. The name manifests Vrindavan within our hearts. Purusharta Siravani, the crest jewel of all goals of life, is to love God. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Satya Kapuno is Ravana Visuddhi Kori Love of God is dormant within the heart of every living being. It is our nature, our essence. Sit for God. But the chanting of God's name awakens that love. Yes. When Ram Chandra appeared in this world, he killed the demon Ravana and Kumbhakarana with his bow and arrow. Lord Narasimha Dev did it with his nails. Hiranyakashi. Lord Varaha Dev, when he appeared, he delivered Hiranyaksha, that great Asura, with his tusk. So that same personality, Krishna, when he appeared, he utilized his Sudarsan chakra to liberate the Asuras. But as Lord Chaitanya, he comes with the supreme of all his weapons. The weapon of the holy name. He doesn't kill anyone with his name. He kills the demonic mentality within our hearts and awakens our divine nature. That is the power of the name. Yes, Krishna reveals his pastimes and we understand what is Vrindavan, what is the goal, what is the substance, but how to get there. It is simple, Lord Chaitanya taught. Just take shelter of this most joyful process of chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna.
should understand the supreme glory of Krishna's appearance. Because unless we understand the value of something, we do not take it seriously. If something is very rare, then we protect it very carefully. There is nothing rare, there is nothing more rare than the opportunity to love Krishna, following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan. And Krishna is so kind that every year on the particular titi or the day which celebrates the event is actually not different than the day of the event itself. On Janmashtami, if we truly take advantage honoring and worshiping the appearance of Krishna. Krishna appears within our hearts. That is our goal. By chanting the holy names, by living in proper association with proper good qualities, Krishna reveals himself within our hearts. Let this be our prayer on holy Janmaster. truly dedicate our, our hearts and our lives to the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of God. And we will take shelter of Him who has so kindly appeared in His name. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Krishna.